All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Well, uh, good afternoon and welcome everyone. We're glad to have you with us today for the Fulton Street Improvement Project virtual open house. We look forward to sharing some important project information with you today and engaging you about what you'd like to see with this project. Uh, my name is Zach Beatmeyer. I'm a Capital Improvements Project Manager with CCDC. And joining me today is uh, Christopher Hawkins. He's the project manager with our design consultant at the Land Group. Uh, today, I'll start off the presentation with some background and existing conditions information about the area, as well as some objectives for the Fulton Street project itself. Christopher will then uh, share some details about two concept designs being considered for this project and some information about next steps. Our presentation should take uh, somewhere between 30 and 45 minutes to go through, so we would we'll have time during the presentation as well as at the end to answer any questions you might have. Uh, we do want to hear from you, so please feel free to share your feedback on anything related to this project. A few housekeeping items. Um, first, we are recording this meeting. We are doing this so that the presentation can be made available on our website for folks who wanted to attend but were not able to. Uh, we'll have a couple opportunities uh, for attendees to participate during the presentation, uh, wherein we'll ask you to uh, provide your feedback with some poll questions. We'll also pause at a few key slides if there are any attendee questions or comments that we need to address. So if you do have a question or comment during the presentation, please feel free to enter that into your Zoom chat window. Uh, you can find that or access that through the chat icon at the bottom center of your Zoom screen, or just click raise your hand and, and we'll call on you. Otherwise, um, we would appreciate it if you could keep your microphone muted during the presentation. and. Finally, this, this open house is not your only opportunity to provide feedback. We have an online survey active for uh, roughly another week and a half, and we invite you to take that survey as well. Christopher will show you a web address for that survey at the end of this presentation. Uh, next slide, please. So we'll, we'll get right into it to orient ourselves. The project we are discussing today is located within the Fulton Street right of way between 9th and Capitol as highlighted yellow here. Uh, Fulton Street is situated within the city's cultural district with a number of notable uh, cultural and performing arts organizations in the vicinity, such as Esther Simplot Performing Arts Academy, uh, Boise Art Museum, the library and Boise Contemporary Theater. And so I'm going to ask that we keep this map up on the screen and uh, Sarah, if you wouldn't mind, please initiating uh, that first poll. We'd like to ask you a couple of questions to just get a sense of who's who's in attendance today. So um, we'll start off with two quick questions. You should see a window popping up on your screen. For the first one, uh, please select up to three. You don't have to pick all three, but if you do have three, you can select up to uh, three for what are your primary reasons for visiting the area. Uh, I live in the area, I work in the area, uh, attend or prepare for performances. I, my schooling or education brings me to the area. I'm attending or going to museums, the zoo or parks. I'm down here for dining or shopping, recreation on the green belt, going to the library. I park in this area to go to other areas of downtown or I never visit this area. And if you have a, a reason for going to that area that's not shown, please feel free to enter that into your chat. Uh, window we're, we're curious to find out why folks visit the area. Then the next one is what mode do you typically use? Again, select up to three for walk, bike, taking an e-scooter, driving alone, carpooling, taxi or ride hailing, transit or other. Give folks just a few moments to respond to those and then I'll ask Sarah to uh, bring up the summary. All right, Sarah, do you want to uh, end that poll and display the results if they're not done? Okay. Yeah, for the first question, it looks like uh, about 30% work, 30% live in the area. Um, about 20% of folks are attending or preparing for performances. Other folks are going to museums, so it's kind of an even distribution. Uh, quite a few folks going down here for Greenbelt access, 
uh, as well. About 60% of folks responded to that. 30% visiting the library or 30% um, visiting other areas of downtown and use this area for parking. Um, and then on poll two, uh, what mode do you use? Um, about 70% said walk, 60% said bike, 60% uh, also drive alone, 10% um, said transit or taxi ride hailing. So. All right, thank you. Um, so moving into existing conditions, the area around Fulton Street was in recent history an industrial and warehouse area served by truck and rail uh, with two north-south rail spurs that traverse through what are now the two alleyways between Ninth and Capitol. A number of the original warehouse buildings from that era are still standing and have been modernized and adapted for other uses like several of those shown on the screen here. There's currently a mix of businesses, theaters, restaurants, vacant buildings, as well as surface parking lots uh, situated along Fulton Street itself. Residential use is a relatively recent addition to the neighborhood with the construction of the Afton. Next slide, please. And while a number of those adjacent properties in the area have been updated and improved, the Fulton Street corridor itself um, remains one of the only streets near the core of downtown that has not been comprehensively improved. The street exhibits discontinuous sidewalk and the segments that are there um, are, are present are deteriorating or have inconsistent streetscape configurations, lack overhead lighting or inconsistent street tree placement. And that mishmash of sidewalk not only poses a safety concern for pedestrians, um, but it also allows for non-standard and non-code compliant on-street parking, uh, storage of solid waste facilities in the right-of-way that hinders access to business and it generally contributes to the overall underutilization of the street. Next slide, please. So the goal with this project are to address that infrastructure deficiency by providing continuous and, and wide sidewalks. Uh, traffic calming treatments such as bull belts and narrowing the roadway width are also being contemplated to help make this area safer and more enjoyable for those not traveling in an automobile. The two concepts that Christopher will be discussing here in a moment do provide for more consistent on-street parking at different capacity levels. And both concepts include improved ADA uh, on-street parking facilities. Uh, improvements will accommodate loading zones and generally make use of uh, familiar streetscape standards uh, and finishes such as tree grates and street furniture. And finally, we are working with the city's Department of Arts and History to determine whether there are opportunities for public art within the corridor and to be implemented with this project. It's still a bit early in the process, but we'll continue coordinating through final design and construction to see what is feasible. Uh, next slide, please. Well, great. So with that, uh, we'll just do a quick check of the chat box to see it doesn't appear like we have any questions yet, but if anyone does have any questions, please feel free to type those in the chat window. Otherwise, um, I'll turn it over to Christopher to go through more detail on the concepts being proposed. Now go ahead, Christopher. Uh, thank you, Zach, and thanks to everyone for joining. Um, so as Zach mentioned, uh, we have been working with the adjacent property owners and then also our partner public agencies at the city and ACHD and have developed two um, streetscape improvement concepts for these two blocks of Fulton. And we'll be sort of going over those in detail with you guys today, but also at this point, we're looking for public feedback as part of that broader survey that um, Zach mentioned earlier. And with that, we'll then sort of refine the concepts and move forward with design. So concept number one is again, more of a standard streetscape section, um, providing widened sidewalks for either sort of a patio dining retail use and then sufficient for pedestrians to move freely through these blocks. And then two lanes of traffic, one in each direction with on-street parking on both sides of the street where pedestrians are buffered by a pretty standard um, furnishing zone and a single row of street trees. 
Um, concept two was developed really um, out of the city's desire to retain and enhance the urban tree canopy. So in an effort to retain some of the existing trees down there, uh, we've developed a unique strategy for a, a double row of staggered um, street trees that help refine the uh, pedestrian and define the pedestrian space there. Um, to achieve that, there are, of course, going to be some, some trade-offs. And so we'll go over these, these two concepts in detail um, now. And, and after I go through each of the individual concepts, we'll again give you guys an opportunity to um, ask questions. But if you have questions while I'm talking, please do just put those in the chat and we'll, we'll try and collect all of those after we go through each of the individual details or, excuse me, concepts. So concept one, again, is a pretty standard street skip section. As you can see from, from this exhibit, we would have a nice over 23 foot wide sort of pedestrian realm, which is broken out between sort of the potential to have about a five foot wide sidewalk retail right against the buildings. As you can see on the far left and far right sides of this section. Um, and then interior to that, you would have a nice wide, again, eight foot sidewalk. Um, this is wider than is typically seen in many of the streets downtown as the city is trying to um, maintain ease of access through these improved streets. And then that eight foot sidewalk would again be protected from the travel lanes and parking by a nice um, five and a half foot furnishing zone that's pretty typical of downtown and would use sort of the standard furnishings as Zach mentioned. With this concept, we would be accommodating about 30 stalls of on-street parking, parallel parking, um, four of which are going to be ADA as a requirement of the city. This is actually not very far off of the amount of parking that's currently provided on the street frontage. Um, we will probably use you lose a little bit as we bring those parking stalls into code compliance and add these ADA stalls. In addition to the on-street parking, there's um, in in excuse me, increased on-street loading. Um, this is for not only the existing uses on the street, but um, the city has some desire for increasing the loading zones for sort of the increase in demand for delivery services. And then finally, as mentioned, pretty typical um, finishes and furnishings. So what we're going to do now is I have a quick fly through to help give you a sense of um, the scale. One thing to note, you will note, see that we have some sort of transparent massings of buildings. These are, you know, understanding that in the future, likely a lot of those surface lots will be, will transition into some other use. So here you can see us looking down Fulton over Cap, from Capitol. Again, nice wide si um, sidewalk dining opportunities. That's about four feet wider than currently White Dog has. We have some decorative hardscape materials at the mid-block crossings, again, to celebrate those rail spurs and do some traffic calming. But otherwise, it's going to be pretty standard street improvements through here. Again, when we approach the 8th Street intersection, the bulbouts to help with pedestrian movement, but then retaining as much of those improvements that were done on 8th Street a few years ago as possible. Similar approach as we cross to the west end of this the project site. Um, with this approach, we are able to pull out a little more room around Boise Contemporary Theater, so there's easier move of pedestrians um, in front of that, that loading dock that's been converted to their entry. And then again, as we come up and look back over the street section from this side, you can see nice wide sidewalks, typical furnishing zone with street trees, and then the, the adequate and appropriately scaled um, travel lanes and parking on the street. So with that, again, that's just a quick sort of introduction to concept one. At this time, um, Sarah or Jordan, if there were any comments that we picked up in the chat um, from folks, we're happy to address those now. Um, it won't be people's last chance to ask questions. So um, if you, you kind of have something on your mind, we can come back to it later if needed. Christopher, there was one or a couple of questions about uh, proposed development on adjacent properties and so uh, we are aware of one one property which is the former uh, foothills school at 600 south 8th street 
um, the school has since uh, relocated and we believe that that property owner is working towards a redevelopment. Um, nothing official has been submitted as far as an application to the city, but um, you've probably seen it in the news. Um, proposed higher density residential is anticipated for that site. Other than that one, we don't have um, anything confirmed as far as redevelopment on any of the other parcels at this point. Um, that there was a second question related to parking. Um, we learned recently that the proposed project at the former Foothill School uh, will not have public parking. Uh, it's, it's likely they're still uh, vetting that with their partners, but it's likely parking would only be provided for the use on site. So um, yeah, no, no public structured parking is, is known at this, at this time. All right, if there are no other questions on concept one, we'll quickly go into um, concept two. And it's again, gonna be a similar process where we'll look at the section, do a, a fly through video, and then open it up for questions as well. So again, concept two, the focus of this is the urban tree canopy. And as you can see in this section, what we are doing is uh, developing a streetscape that has a, a, an expanded pedestrian area um, where we were able to increase it about four feet from the first concept. And in doing so, we're able to create some flexibility and a unique identity for Fulton Street. Um, the identity again is reinforced by this double row of staggered street trees that create a nice canopy that can be either used for um, pedestrians to walk sort of through the middle of the canopy as is shown on the right side of the screen where outdoor retail associated with any adjacent businesses is up against the building facade. Um, in, in this iteration, it's able to be up to 14 feet wide. So that's more in line with the, the amount of sort of patio space that's available on 8th Street um, in sort of the, the core of downtown, or it's comparable to what you're, you're going to see over on the Basque block at sort of Bardenay. And then Alternatively, if we look at the left side, and this is where this concept really shows its ability to have some flexibility is the sidewalk for pedestrian use can also be pushed up against the building and the space that's created sort of between those double row of trees could be used for some more temporary sort of retail uses or um, patio uses. Uh, this example shows like a more like a hot dog vendor or something, you know, that maybe isn't quite as permanent as some of the cafes that are directly adjacent um, to building facades. To get this sort of wider sidewalk, say, save some of the existing trees and expand the urban, urban canopy, of course, there is a trade-off. And, and that trade-off is gonna be having to eliminate some of the on-street parking. So in this scenario, we go from about 30 um, on-street parking spaces shown in the first concept um, to about 16 parking spaces. Again, most of those would be on one side of the street, except for the locations where we have to install our ADA parking. Um, and in that case, we need one ADA parking stall on every block face. So here you'll see again, the fly through for that. The finishes um, for this concept are again, gonna be very much familiar to what you see downtown in terms of the site furnishings, tree grates, concrete paving surfaces and decorative paving surfaces. Um, but here you can see again, we have nice wide areas for patio dining. This In this location, we're able to walk through the sort of um, colonnade created by the trees for the pedestrians and they would be buffered from on-street parking by some additional site furnishings that are typical of downtown. As we get up to the intersection, again, we're retaining that, those existing improvements as much as possible. And as we cross the street, you can see an example where you could do the sidewalk pedestrian traffic up against the building facade and then opens up that, that space closer to the road for other uses. Um, similar to concept one, we're able to get a little more space out in front of the contemporary theater for pedestrian movement. Um, and that sort of takes us out to the end of this particular concept. And as we look up back over the street, you can see 
that we will have, you know, a reduction in on street parking, but that's still a bit made available two lanes of traffic and then a really mixed opportunity for um, street pedestrian area usage, whether it's using the, the space between the trees for pedestrians or some sort of dining opportunity or moving pedest or pedestrians or the dining up against the buildings. And now that we've shown sort of that concept, I'm sorry, we have to go kind of quickly through those videos. So I, I talk pretty fast, but if there are some questions um, specific to the second one, uh, we'll go through those and then we'll do a little comparative discussion about sort of what we've looked at so far and, and open it up more for, for general questions. Christopher, we do have a couple of questions. I don't know if they're specific to any, either of the alternatives, but um, one question was in relation to uh, securing residential parking zones in the area. So that's, that is regulated by the city of Boise. You would, you would contact parking services. I believe they have an online application or process for submitting a request for that, but they have to evaluate a number of things before they can make a determination. I believe that might I'd have to go to a, a city council vote uh, for residential. Um, let's see. We we have not confirmed from the question is what what will the parking regulations be after the project, and so we have not confirmed with parking services what will be the case right now. It's um, some of it's unmetered or unregulated at all. Some of it is two hour parking, um, 8th Street has meters. It's likely that the city will want to implement meters, but we have not confirmed that with them. That's a detail we will work through uh, with final design. Um, I don't anticipate it would be different between the two alternatives. Um, I, I anticipate they would regulate the parking the same regardless of the alternative. Um, and then one question regarding bikes and car vehicles sharing space was a consideration given to bike lanes on the street. We, we, did, we did contemplate that, but um, this corridor is obviously uh, fairly restricted and it does not provide a ton of uh, connectivity east and west beyond 9th Street or Capitol Boulevard. And that's evidenced um, obviously through the low traffic volumes. I think the last ACHD count did on the street was below a thousand vehicles in a 24 hour period. And um, we actually requested ACHD to give us updated counts, but they, they typically don't even take counts updates when the street volumes are so low. Um, so yeah, that, the volumes on the street probably don't warrant um, bike lanes um, and fall within that kind of mixing shared use space that you, you do see on some other streets in downtown. Yeah, and, and along with that, in either of these concepts, you know, we're trying to implement some strategies in terms of not only improving pedestrian safety, but a lot of those things, bulb outs, reduced travel lanes are also going to be improvements for a shared bike vehicle road section. And is that, do we have any additional, I'm sorry, I don't have the chat open online with the Presentation. That's it for now, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. Thanks everyone for the comments and, and continue to, to ask those. Um, sort of now we're just going to, I'm going to do a quick review to compare sort of the two concepts we've gone over and then have a little brief discussion about sort of where we're going from here. So as was presented, concept one again is really implementing pretty typical street improvements for Fulton Street. Um, with the addition of a, a wider sidewalk for pedestrians and retail um, and reducing the vehicle travel lanes and parking so that we can get slower speeds um, through this area and have it more appropriately scaled um, for its context. And then option two, again, the, the driving force behind that is trying to retain um, some of the existing trees and enhance the tree canopy to create a more inviting space and it allows us to have a more flexible pedestrian area that is larger than concept one. Um, but to achieve that, as was mentioned, is we, we will probably have to sacrifice some of the on-street parking. Alternatively, you know, we're just early in the process here of trying to get public feedback. So we've had some one-on-one -on -one meetings with local property owners again to check back in. We've opened up this larger 
public survey, which we'll talk a little bit more in a minute here, and then we're offering this initial opportunity. So it's more than likely as we collect all of this feedback and get everyone's input that we could end up in a place where it's not necessarily going to be concept one or concept two. It may be sort of a hybrid of the two where we're able to bring back more of the parking um, from concept one, but there might be opportunities, specific opportunities where we're able to do more of the double tree canopy and wider pedestrian areas um, from concept two. So uh, we're definitely not at a, a place yet where one any one of these things is the answer. Um, we'll be looking to get public feedback to help us make that decision. So with that, we do have another poll. This one is gonna be more specific to the concepts that we presented. So if Sarah can pull up the polling. Um, so the first one is which concept do you prefer? Concept one, concept two, you may be undecided or maybe you are interested in the hybrid where you'd like to see maybe a little more parking brought back. Um, but we still get to do more trees than we shown in concept one. If you do pick the hybrid option, please note in the chat sort of what was it about the two options that you would like to see. After you've taken a chance to answer um, that poll question, the second one is uh, if you uh, selected concept one or two, what do you like best about your preferred option? Is it the familiar downtown street section shown in concept one? the 30 on-street parking stall shown in concept one rather than the 16 provided in concept two, uh, protection and expansion of the urban tree canopy for sidewalk shading shown in concept two, reduction of on-street parking for expanded sidewalk uses shown in concept two, the flexibility of the sidewalk areas shown in concept two, or the unique double row of trees shown in concept two that gives the street a little bit more identity. And then, of course, other. And again, if you want to offer specifics in the chat for why you selected uh, your preferred option, um, please go ahead and do that. And so we'll have that on record. Christopher, um, should we maybe go back one slide so folks can see the cross sections? Yeah. So thinking about this. So we'll give everyone some time. And then, Sarah, once you've got a pretty good response rate, let us know. We have about 64% participating, so I'm going to give it like 15 more seconds. All right. And people can follow up with their chat answers after we close the poll, of course. Nope. All right. Thanks, everyone, for their answers. So um, by and large, it looks like everyone is interested in concept two. Um, thank you for your feedback on that. And then interesting, so I'm, I'm interested to follow up on the chat on the folks who are, are looking at the hybrid solution. So as we look at sort of what people like the most about the option they chose, sort of the, the ones that are going to stand out are the trees and the fact that in that concept number two, we're able to sort of expand that and use that to sort of create some identity down there um, on Fulton Street. Other things for consideration, it looks like, are the reduction in parking for sidewalk uses and then also the flexibility shown in that concept number two. So again, thank you all for your participation in that poll and so far in this open house presentation, but we do want to let you know that, of course, this is not going to be the last opportunity that you have to uh, take a look at what we want to do down there on Fulton Street. So through the month of February, as Zach mentioned, we'll have our public engagement process really um, on Full Court Press, where we have that public survey open for, for folks to do. I would encourage all of you to go and participate in that online public survey. It is available until the 21st, and you can access that through CCDC's homepage. I think Sarah is also going to provide a link here in the chat that you can use um, to get directly to our survey. That's going to um, offer you an opportunity to give us a little bit more detailed response to some of these things and really help us sort of fine tune uh, the concepts and, and get to something that works the best for everyone. After we've collected all of that information over 
through February. We're going to an analyze the data, obviously. And then we'll be working with the local property owners and again, public agencies to try and get to a preferred concept sort of by the end of April. Um, and then we'll, we'll use the summer and the fall to develop our construction drawings and go through the appropriate agency reviews with the hopes of having construction on this project occurring from the spring to fall, early spring to fall of 2023. And um, in, in developing that construction schedule, we'll obviously be very conscious of working with the local property owners to ensure that we're not impacting their operations in any way that's going to be a detriment to um, their, their daily rituals. And uh, with that, I would say we are going to open up now to any just general questions. If folks have them, you can raise your hand and uh, we'll, we'll have uh, Zach, do you, are you going to call on folks or we'll have someone call on folks and we'll try and answer your questions for you if you didn't get a chance to put them in the chat. Yeah, a couple more questions that popped up in the chat. So yes, we did reach out to uh, Jennifer um, recently. We have not requested a, a attending a meeting, but that's a great uh, um, suggestion to go talk with the Downtown Boise Neighborhood Association. Uh, I'll follow up with Jennifer. Thank you for suggesting that. And then a question came in, um, is it possible to create a more unique neighborhood, perhaps a focus on using materials evaluated for their embedded carbon content, such as granite pavers, curb blocks, concrete and brick materials may be quite high in carbon content and also quite common. Um, yeah, we, we, we have not evaluated materialities to that level of detail yet, but certainly um, we are happy to take any input you might have. Um, we, we could look at some of those uh, factors and selection of materials as we move through final design, but yeah, we just haven't gotten to that level of detail. Yeah, and, and on that, in addition to doing a, an analysis of the materials, we'll also be working with the city of Boise and ACHD on the selection and confirmation of those materials, um, because ultimately they'll be responsible for operations and maintenance. And so they'll have an opinion on all of those things. Um, you know, we personally would agree it'd be nice to get something unique and interesting for Fulton and make Fulton this really great, unique space. Um, and so we'll be looking to balance sort of those things, long-term operations, public agency sort of opinions, and then also, again, trying to do what's best for uh, Fulton and the businesses on Fulton and folks that live on Fulton or near Fulton. Well, that's the last question we had in the chat window. So um, yeah, anybody else? I mean, we don't, we don't have too many folks on the call. So if you would just like to unmute yourself and ask a question or make a comment, we'd be happy to have you. Looks like Ben of BCT has a question. Hey there. Hi. Uh, I don't know if it's my video on, I can't see. Yeah, so. yeah we can see you. Great. Um, I'm just curious, is that it was asked earlier about, you know, the development's plans for development. I just wanted to make sure I understand there's actually, besides Foothill School, no, no other developments in the works? Um, we are not aware of any, no one has uh, approached us about a development. We know that some uh, properties that are currently surface parking lots, they have long-term visions for them, but I don't believe they've uh, moved into the actual project development or at least they have not notified us that they are moving to that stage. So it, I guess the, the question then is you talk about the businesses on Fulton that might um, uh, benefit from, from this. And I'm thinking of the businesses that are on Fulton, uh, which is the Winekeeper um, Photography Studio outside of White Dog um, and Gas Lantern potentially and, and Smoke and Time, which are all awesome. Um, I'm, I'm unclear without any development what the benefit is for those buildings, for those businesses, uh, particularly since we lose uh, all of the parking. For most Great question. Um, so yes, the, the benefit is for future businesses where you currently have no buildings. So yeah, on, on uh, Capitol Boulevard and Fulton, we would be in implementing infrastructure, which would help future first floor uses that 
Mm -hmm. We believe that property owner would, would be implementing with the development uh, restaurants um, similar to those across the street. Um, same with the southern half of the block from 8th to, uh, not, uh, excuse me, 8th to 9th. Uh, no buildings there, obviously, now, um, but future buildings will likely have uh, first floor retail, commercial, or restaurant dining experiences that could benefit from having this. So mm -hmm. um, rather than having... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I was just say rather than having each individual property develop their frontage um, one at a time, this would provide more of a comprehensive uh, jump start to that, uh, hopefully incentivizing redevelopment to come in as well. Sure. And until then, the, the parking uh, lots that are here, the one at Capitol and Fulton and the one uh, on the corner of 8th and Fulton, uh, those will those will remain until until development occurs, or mm -hmm. will these will this uh, either of these concepts require those parking lots to go away? Yeah, I, I'll I'll fill that one, Zach. Um, yeah. So with either of these concepts, we would still be providing access to those existing parking and work around those. Um, we won't be inhibiting any of the current or hopefully future uses with the improvements as the intent. Great. Okay. Yeah. The improvements for this project would remain within the right of way. So mm -hmm. yeah, technically we shouldn't be even impacting those two properties. Right. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, well, um, I think we can maybe stop the official presentation. If folks are uh, wanting to hang out a little bit longer, they're welcome to do so. Mm -hmm. We uh, would be happy to answer any questions. Jordan, did you have something you wanted to add? Uh, um, there was another question that popped into the chat uh, regarding establishing specific parking areas for those micro mobility devices. So I'm, I'm guessing like uh, dockless bikes and scooters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, so uh, a design detail we haven't gotten into yet, but I know the city is uh, closely monitoring that throughout town. And so we will we will coordinate design elements with the city um, and by regional transit for that matter. If, if they have an opinion on that matter, uh, we can we can have spaces for those. Um, we just haven't gotten to that level of detail yet. But great mm -hmm. suggestion. Okay. Well, Christopher, I'll let you close out with anything else or we can end the meeting now and um, yeah. get folks back okay. to their day. Yeah, I would just like to again, thank everyone for coming and participating today. You know, please do give us your thoughtful feedback through that public survey or if you just want to send an email over to someone from the project team, you know, we, we, we're really just interested in getting everyone's opinions and thoughts so that we can make the most informed decisions moving forward. Um, so yeah, thank you for your time. We'll probably hang out here for a little while longer in case anyone thinks of a last minute question, but enjoy the rest of your day. And we look forward to checking back in with everyone um, as this project moves forward. Thanks everybody.